So you're thinking of moving to the Woodlands, Texas, but before you do, you want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, sit right there because today we're going to tell you the pros and cons of living in the Woodlands, Texas. Today we're going to be covering pros and cons of living in the Woodlands, Texas. Now, the Woodlands has a big reputation. Lots of people will tell you the great things about the Woodlands, and there are a lot of great things. But we're also going to cover some of the cons. You know, with every pro, there's a con, uh, and the Woodlands is not for everyone. <laughs> there we hey. go. <laughs> the Woodlands is not for everyone. So let's get into it. Cool. So I think uh, I grew up here, uh, born and raised here in the Woodlands area. Clayton uh, has lived here as an adult. And so I think we have two different perspectives. And so he kind of has the perspective of moving to the Woodlands and what he likes, what he doesn't. I think the first thing you hear about when you move to the Woodlands is how good the schools are. Uh, a ton of people will talk about that. So we've covered it a little in some of our other videos. But the schools are fantastic. Um, there's two main high schools here, and everybody loves them. Um, one con about the schools that people don't talk about is how competitive it is. And I think that's important to note. You know, you moved back from California, right? Yeah. And so when moving from California or out of state, people might not realize that in Texas, they do a school ranking system. And so if you are in the top 10% of your class and you, uh, and you rank in the top 10% your senior year, you get automatic acceptance into state schools here in Texas. And so if you go to the Woodlands Public Schools, they're actually more competitive than a lot of the schools surrounding it. And so while it's great, your kids are gonna get a great education, they're gonna have to fight for that top 10%. Yeah, the Woodlands was also in my district. Uh, I grew up in the Austin area, but they were in our district for sports. And uh, same with sports, extracurricular activities. They've got great programs, but they're highly competitive. So. Uh, you know, they make cuts, not everybody gets to participate, not everybody gets a trophy. Uh, it's a, a very competitive um, uh, school to, to uh, compete in academically and uh, athletically. But that being said, you can rest assured that if your kids are in any of the feeder schools up into the two high schools, the Woodlands High School and College Park, they are gonna get a great education, they are gonna get great extracurriculars, and they are going to be put in the best position for whenever they graduate. Whatever they wanna do, whether that's college or anything else, uh, you can just trust that they're getting a great education. So I think the next pro that we wanna talk about Also, here, one more thing. The surrounding schools are also really highly rated. Woodlands has some really highly rated uh, schools, but the surrounding schools, a lot of the surrounding schools are also highly rated. That's true. Yeah, I think that you can get caught in the, the Woodlands bubble uh, mindset and have to get your kids in the Woodlands schools. But uh, the Woodlands isn't even its own school system. It's part of Conroe ISD, so it's part of a greater school system. And so you're, you're absolutely right. There's great schools in different districts all over Houston. We recommend you use niche.com for school ratings. Um, at the end of the day, you know, everybody has a different opinion of what a good school is. And so we think it's important for you to do your own research. We just want to give you the tools to do that. So, all right. You want to pick a con? A con. Um, one of the big cons for me personally, uh, not being from here originally, spending a lot more time here uh, in the last couple of years, is that everything looks the same. It's, again, uh, a pro and a con, but the Woodlands was developed where they didn't cut down all the trees. So as you're driving around, almost everything is covered in trees. A lot of the roads look the same. A lot of the um, shopping centers are, are covered up by foliage. So it's real easy to get lost here. It's real easy to um, not have, take a while to get kind of your bearings on the woodlands and, and getting around the woodlands. And I would say having grown up here, it was, it, you know, before Google Maps, it was still difficult to know your way around the woodlands. When they started developing it over 45 years ago, uh, one, they left all the trees, and then two, they planted new trees, which means they're 45 years old. And so they left barriers between all the roads and shopping centers. So whereas in other suburbs, you're gonna see the shopping center in the woodlands, you either need Google Maps, you need a friend like us, or you just need to know that they're there. Otherwise, you're, you're gonna be completely lost. And that's what a lot of our out-of-state clients, um, I think, don't realize when they get here, is uh, that it's easy to get lost. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that being said, that allows for a lot of hike and bike trails, a ton of uh, places for you to go and uh, run. It's a very active community. As I was driving up here today, uh, saw people walking their dogs, riding bikes, uh, going on runs. There's a, a marathon here 
There's a Ironman triathlon that goes on here. It's a very active community and they really utilize that that wooded area, I think, to One, do that. 100%, um, there's over 200 miles of hike and bike trails that run along all the roadsides here in the woodlands and they're all connected. So uh, I think it would take quite a while for me to cover all of that. But yeah, you've got tons of people that actually live here and train professionally for triathlons. You've got Lake Woodlands. Um, and so yeah, tons of cool opportunities there. Uh, the other thing, Woodlands gets its name obviously because of the trees, tons of green spaces, over 140 parks here in the woodlands. So with, at any given time, you're within just a couple minutes of a park, which I think is amazing. And, uh, and so those are definitely some of the, the pros. Let's hit a con. So I would say one of the biggest cons for me, there's two big cons for me and we'll cover them both. Uh, the biggest con for me in the woodlands for clients that want a new home is that they're not gonna find one. So because the woodlands was founded in 1974 and there's nine villages that have been built out. Uh, the last village to be built out started in 2007 and it's been completed for over 10 years now. And so you're not gonna find a new home in the woodlands. Um, we're not quite to that age and development yet where they're tearing down the old homes. So if you, if you want kind of a newer look and feel, you're gonna be working with an older home in a remodel, one that's either already been remodeled or you're gonna buy one and go into that process yourself. And it's right at that bubble too, where it's hard to find a remodel. Like they're they're from the 80s. They're not really in that remodeled state yet. Um, and so, yeah, it can be definitely hard to find a new build, hard to find a remodel. Uh, what's built in the woodlands is kind of is kind of what you got. You got to work with it. And so um, you're not going to get a lot of these kind of open concept floor plans that you're getting in these new construction communities that have popped up all around the woodlands. And so uh, to me, that's a con uh, for a lot of our clients that call us and they're like, yeah, I want a new house in the woodlands. I say, too bad. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, but we'll do our best to, you know, find you something that that meets close to that criteria or has been refreshed. And then um, I would say the other con to me, the, the biggest con for me here in the woodlands, having grown up here is when I grew up here, everything in the woodlands was 10, 12 minutes from it, from each other. Um, now there's twice as many people in the woodlands, but the infrastructure is, is the same that it's always been. And so, uh, at any given time, depending on where you're at in the woodlands, it could take you 25 to 30 minutes just to get from the woodlands, the back of the woodlands up to the freeway. To me, that's a con. Um, at certain times of day to especially schools getting getting in and out of schools there can be some really bad bottleneck areas um, after you know that five o'clock traffic which seems to be like the three four five six o'clock traffic these yeah days. Um, yeah traffic can be really bad you've you've got um, and this is kind of a pro and a con so you have a ton of industry here in the woodlands which is different than a lot of the other suburbs we've got exxon up here we've got hp as you can see behind us you've got a ton of buildings here this isn't just your normal suburb you've got tons of office space and so because of that um, you actually have some people reverse commuting so they live in houston and they're driving to the woodlands for work every day and so when you have that you've got traffic going both ways on the freeway so yeah from 4 to 6 30 p.m monday through friday uh, there can be gridlock out on the freeway and then everybody's trying to flow back into the woodlands uh, around 3 p.m. when schools are getting out. Once again, a pro is those elementary schools are in your neighborhood. They're right down the street from you, which is the coolest thing. You'll see eight-year-olds just riding their bikes to school. It's safe. It's friendly. But All you've got to wait on that right eight-year-old to ride his bike across the street in front of you at yeah. three o'clock when you're trying to get wherever you're trying to go. Yeah. And so to me, you know, that is a con. Something the Woodlands offers for people who commute downtown, I know they have a couple of park and ride options uh, to help with the commute downtown, but that commute downtown, if you're working in the Houston Business District, that's gonna be a pretty, a pretty nasty uh, commute. Houston is the third largest city. I think we just passed Chicago as the third largest yeah. city in the country. So um, a lot of traffic, you know, that comes along with that. Uh, so something you wanna be mindful of uh, if you're coming and you're gonna be working in a different area. Um, like Kyler said, there's a lot of industry here. There's a lot of office space here. There is that reverse commute, um, but yeah, just something to be mindful of. And so. then the, the pro to that though, is that obviously COVID's changed everything. People are working from home, but the Woodlands was designed so that you don't have to leave it. So if you do have to commute to Houston, we definitely recommend living in certain parts of the Woodlands versus others for that commute sake. But if you're not making that commute, 
Uh, because the Woodlands is broken up into nine villages, each village has its own shopping center, and the hub of that, no matter where you're at in the neighborhood, is five minutes away. So you've got coffee, you've got food, you've got grocery store. So if you live and work in the Woodlands, it's a no-brainer. Um, that's kind of why they call it a bubble, is because you don't have to leave. You don't have to go all the way to Houston to find entertainment. You've got over 200 uh, awesome restaurants here in the Woodlands, which I think doubles the number of probably any other suburb here in the area. And yeah, you've got, got a, uh, Grimaldi's across the street. I lived in New York City for a little while, so it's good to have some New York City pizza yeah. available. Uh, a lot of the big artists come and perform at the Cynthia Woods Pavilion. Uh, last year they had Chris Stapleton. This year the Backstreet Boys are coming. Uh, Rod Stewart is coming. I saw the Doobie Brothers at the the uh, Pavilion last year. It was a great concert. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of that entertainment that is coming to you. The shops, uh, we're here, uh, and there's a ton of shops around here. The Woodlands Mall, Market Street, some high-end stuff, uh, and a lot of great shopping. It's all right here, kind of centralized. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a pro to be able to go up to the mall, go up to Market Street, go up to Hughes Landing, go come to Baker Street. Um, there's nightlife here. So where we're at right now over here on Baker Street, there's a row of bars and it's not just like your local tavern. It feels kind of like a modern urban downtown area with bars, but you're a five, 10 minute Uber ride from your house after the bars. And so uh, I would say that that's definitely a pro. Um, one, one thing that I think is a con on the woods and the woodlands is uh, everyone loves trees and most of the other suburbs around Houston are you know, farmland that they just mowed down all the trees and built a bunch of houses. Uh, the woodlands isn't that, but I think one thing, you know, people don't consider when buying in the woodlands is what comes with all these trees. So because the trees have been there for a while, uh, a lot of the driveways are going to get root damage. Um, the driveways are going to be cracked at a lot of these older homes. And the other thing too, is with so much shade cover, if you're moving to Texas and you're like, I really want that picturesque white picket fence, green lawn, good luck because uh, it's so shaded in most of the backyards in the woodlands that we actually see uh, grass has a really hard time growing. So uh, a lot of times it's just dirt. Yeah, and a, lot of the, a lot of the trees here are pine trees too. So yeah. you're dealing with pine needles and that's a whole different kind of management if you've never dealt with a pine tree. Yeah, before. if you have five pine trees hanging over your roof, you're gonna be up on your roof a lot, cleaning off the pine needles. And if you aren't, you know, it's gonna affect your, your roof's longevity. And, and these are the things that, you know, I would say the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to that. But I think if you're moving from out of state or from out of town and you haven't been in a pine forest before, uh, it's definitely something that you need to know about before moving here. Yeah, which is, the shade is also a pro in that it gets really hot in Texas. It's not hot today. It's one of those rare, uh, yeah, chillier it's... days. And, um, but for most of the year, it's it's really hot in, in Houston, just in general. Uh, yeah. Air conditioning was invented in Houston, Texas. Did you know that? Nope. Out of necessity. Um, it gets really hot and humid. So that shade is is really nice, can, can bring that temperature down. Um, so you know, that's a pro too. That is true, yeah, especially for like energy efficiency. So you might be getting an older house that might not be as well insulated, but you get the shade cover, so it kind of offsets. Um, so yeah, uh, and it does get hot here. I will say <laughs> the weather is a con. It probably to me is the worst part about living here. It's very humid. And very you, moved, humid. you moved back from LA and that was probably tough to give up. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's definitely an adjustment. You know, if you're coming from California, especially there's, you know, sunny 75 all year round. If you're coming from like the North, we're not dealing with snow generally, no. which is, which is great. So, you know, you, you might like the weather. Um, I do enjoy that we have seasons. I busted out my coat that I hadn't worn in a long time when I was in California, uh, the other day for our, for our, our little cold spell. Um, but it gets, yeah, it's really hot, really humid, more humid in Houston than in other parts of Texas. Yeah. Even. And, um, it's an adjustment in the summer. There are things you got to think about, prepare bug spray. Um, you got to, Think about your your air conditioning, your your outdoor events in in regard to how the weather is going to play into that for sure. Two things I want to add on to that con is people that are used to hot weather, like if you're coming from Arizona or somewhere else that's hot and dry, and you say, "Oh, it's 100 degrees," that's not that bad. When you add 98 percent humidity, you you, yeah, dry you will want to die. And, and the humidity, heat are totally yeah, they're very different. different. And just so, just expect to sweat. Get really good air conditioning. 
and uh, or just don't commute, just work from home. A lot of a lot of pool usage. People use their pools here. Yeah. There are a lot of homes with pools here, and people really get the use out of those pools. That's in the true. Summer, you're going to want to find a pool on, on a lot of the hot days. And then you touched on it, but another big con here is mosquitoes. They really can be bad. And so obviously there's some solutions for that. If, if you give us a call when you are moving here, we'll give you all the different options to mitigate that. But at the end of the day, um, they're here. They're going to be here. Yeah. Even if you spray, even if your neighborhood sprays, you're, you're going to have mosquitoes. That's going to be uh, a part of it. You're going to want to research your, your bug spray, your organic, your non-organic, your DEET, whatever it is. You want to have your, uh, your stock pile ready to go because yeah, bug spray in the summer becomes like a, a part of my daily routine. Yeah. I would say, uh, from everything we covered, it's, we can keep it short and sweet because Really, there aren't that many cons to the woodlands. Um, it's a beautiful place to live. It's master planned. Everything looks great. The schools are great. Um, there are great housing options. You just need to know how to navigate that. And so that's why we're doing these videos. We just want you guys to um, have the, the, all the information you could possibly need when making the best decision for you. We realize that the woodlands might not be for everyone, um, but a lot of people are gonna love it and we think you will too. And so we just wanna share that with you guys. So if you are looking at making a move anywhere to the Houston area, once again, subscribe to the channel, tap the bell for notifications. That way you can be the first to know about everything going on here in the Houston area. And of course, give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email and let us know how we can help you make a smooth move to Houston.